Hey guys, welcome to Ali Love Creative, and today we're talking about my favorite and only RF lens that I decided to buy, the Canon 70-200 f4. Let's get to it. Now, if you watch this channel, you've seen me do a review on the 70 to 200 RF f2.8. I love that lens. I think that lens sparked my interest into looking at other options that Canon has when it comes to the RF system. So far, RF lenses have been great. I've done a couple reviews on my channel. I love the optics of the RF lenses. However, they all just seem way too overpriced and way too expensive for me to decide to invest in. That was until I discovered the 70 to 200 F4. So let's get this out of the way. You're probably thinking, you did a review on the 70 to 200 F.28. Why didn't you buy that lens? Well, when it comes to bang for your buck, I feel that this lens gets you 80% of the way there compared to the Canon F2.8 70 to 200 RF. Now to give you a little background, I shoot a lot of fashion. I shoot a lot of weddings. Um, I shoot a lot of corporate work, commercial work. I shoot pretty much everything. And when you shoot a lot of different projects, I think you need to realize that every lens needs to be, well, pretty much every purchase you, you, you buy needs to be able to work on every level of your career and every level of production. And I think the 70 to 200 F 2.8 is a great lens and I think it's awesome. However, I think for most of the stuff that I do, F4 is fast enough um, good enough, especially when it comes to a telephoto lens. Now I'm all about the fastest lens possible. I love shooting at 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, 2.8. I'm a big fan of that. I love shooting wide open. I love blurry backgrounds. But when it comes to a telephoto lens, what people don't really take in consideration is compression. So when you zoom in on a telephoto lens, kind of like this, you can see right here. Isn't that cool? I love the fact that it does that. Um, when you zoom in on a telephoto lens, you're basically getting a blurry background, kind of like if you were just opening up your aperture. Now compression and shooting wide open are not the same thing, I'm not saying that, but if you want a blurry background, you can shoot with a telephoto lens at f4 and achieve a very creamy blurry background when you're shooting portraits and when you're shooting weddings or whatever you're shooting. And that kind of was my reasoning with a lens like this. Now this lens on paper, has pretty much every feature I need that the f2.8 has. It's got stabilization. It's got different modes for stabilization. It's got more of a close focus switch right here where you can go from full to 2.5 meters or whatever. It has a lot of the same features. It's small, it's compact, it's very lightweight, but at a cheaper price. I recently used this lens on a fashion shoot and it's one of the secrets that a lot of professional photographers use is they shoot models because they want them to look more lean they really want to compress the body they shoot a lot of professional models Victoria's Secret all of them uh, at 200 or 100 or basically above and a lens like this would be great as long as you have the space you can shoot a lot of cool images and I did that on my fashion shoot and the images turned out great the color, the contrast, the sharpness of this RF lens. RF lenses are on, are on another level of sharpness. I've said this on the channel, and I, I can't say that this lens is any different. This lens is so sharp, and of course at f4 it should be sharp, but considering I come from shooting with Sigma lenses, which are very sharp, this is always blowing me away how sharp this lens is. Do you always want that? No, a lot of times I shoot with black pro mist filters. I try to tone that sharpness down, but it's really cool that this lens is sharp right out of the get-go. Autofocus on this lens works great. I had the f2.8 on my review in the past, and the autofocus worked great on that lens too. The only thing I find that if you're hand holding and you're trying to do stabilization on this lens, it's a little jumpy, but a monopod, tripod or just you know if you're doing video in general you should probably figure out another way to stabilize anyway at 200 you know 100 millimeters so 
stabilization works pretty good, just saying it can be a little jumpy when you're shooting video. One of the main reasons why I bought this lens is it's so compact. Now, I shoot a lot of weddings, and when I do, I normally just rent a 70 to 200 EF, and that lens is so much heavier and so much bigger than this lens. That lens is like all the way up here, and it's super heavy. And it's a lens that the reason why I rent it is because I just never find myself wanting to grab it unless I'm shooting a wedding. I'm shooting, I need to be really far away and zoom in on the action. That was until I found this lens, and I find that this lens is super light, super compact. I can grab this lens and shoot for eight hour, 10 hour wedding days and not even break a sweat. And that's why I decided to go with a RF version of this lens because even though the EF is cheaper, you can really, really, really shoot for a long time with this lens and it's just awesome. One reason why you shouldn't get this lens is if you shoot a lot of weddings in low light, if you shoot a lot of weddings and you really want the cleanest image possible and you need those extra stops of light, then you can consider getting the 2.8 version. I personally would just bump my ISO in that situation and just roll with it because a lot of the Canon cameras have pretty good low light sensitivity. But if you really need that extra stop of light, then that this lens is not what you wanna do. Now, should you get the Canon RF 70 to 200 F4 or the 2.8 version? I would say get the F4 version. I know most reviewers, when they do this, they go, it depends. If you want the 2.8 version and you got the money, go for it, it's a better lens. However, for the majority of us, I feel like you can get 90%, 80% of the things you need to do with this lens and you will be completely fine. And you'll save a significant amount of money. The F4 version, I bought this used, uh, refurbished from Canon, which is awesome because you know, you're buying it from Canon for $1,500. It retails for more like $1,700. The F2.8 version is $2,700 on B&H. If you want to check that out, you probably can get it for a little cheaper, but that's a considerable amount of money. And I think for most people, this lens will get you there and you will be very satisfied with the results. Now that's all I have to say about my first RF lens, the 70 to 200 F4. I love this lens. Let me know if you have any questions about photography or videography in the comments below, and I will see you next time. See you later.